welcome to track number seven of Birthday Kewa. Even on this earth. Ben, come here. You see, you people, you must stop believing in chance. Either God is God. That's why the Muslims say Allah Akbar. It means God is great. Recently, I was watching a film, Fahrenheit 9-11. You know, where they, they show some Iraqi woman whose house has been born. My children have been killed. Then she did the, the, the last to say, God is great, God is great, God is great. It's like God, you know, He's great and He will avenge, He will fight. He's a great God. He's, he rules everything. God is great. That, that's, the, that's the import of the message when they say that they allow Akbar. God is great. It's like He's above and in control. You must stop thinking of chance. There's nothing by chance, there's no chance here. As we are here, there's nothing that's chance. It's God divinely arranging and organizing. Every player is divinely brought in. Every time, every moment. There's not, the Bible says, all things are for your sakes. The Bible says, thank you God for all things. All things. Which church you were in which church before? Praise be. And now you are here. Are you hearing something different? Something great. Wonderful. Something wonderful. Is it changing your life? Totally. 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 I'm something else altogether. You are some, what were you before? <laughs> well, um, I was with the boys' brigade. I was um, a training officer in the boys' brigade. And um, uh, boys' brigade basically is uh, it's a youth. Actually, what were you like? Oh, uh, this, my spiritual life was some, somehow, it, it wasn't going on at all, because I used to, I used to go to the class, I used to drink, I used to do all that, though I was a member of the boys' brigade. You are what you are by the grace of God. <laughs> <laughs> and today you are in church. And so what, what, are you, what, do you, what do you, can you feel that you are becoming? Bishop, I can't explain. I can't. You see, I've, I've been under Pastor Fee. He's been a lot. I just can't explain. I, I, I believe I'm, I'm, I'm heading somewhere. I believe. I, I just can't explain. I believe. Now, how did you get here into the church in the first place? I got married to Lydia, but I met her on campus and I visited the campus branch. So I, I started Lighthouse on campus. But then when, after the wedding, when you prayed for us, when we met you, I, I felt that this is where I belong to. So after we got married, we came over. I joined the North Kensington branch. That was, that was before I got married anyway. I, got the, I joined the North Kensington under Pastor Fee. And there were lots of teaching coming from Pastor Fee. And I realized that this is the place for us. I and mean, all that we went through, you spoke to me. You, you said one thing to me. I said, you asked me a question. That what do you want to do? And I said, I'm coming to London to further my studies. I'm coming to do my master's in yeah. MBA. Then you explained, said there are seven yeah. things yeah. to do. First of all, you can decide to marry. You can decide to do your master's. You can decide to do your doctorate. You can decide to build a house. You can decide to do all things. But before you do the seventh thing, you would have 10, 70 years. And you, 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 couldn't have, you wouldn't have been able to accomplish what God really wanted you to be. So if you could take that step now, before all these things, then you'd be heading somewhere. That was the advice you gave to me. So, Wonderful. So, you met Lydia. So you, you know Lydia, Lydia, used to, you, Lydia used to be in my house every day. Teaching my children. Yeah. She was in our, our, our home. Yeah. So you see, he was being brought somewhere that I wouldn't have even spoken to. I mean, I, people are getting married, I don't see them. Yes. And when I come, I, I look there, they say, Some people got married. <laughs> bye bye. God bless you. I don't know them. But you see, I knew them because whatever. So I had chance to talk with him. And if he had a chance to even be brought in. You see, all this you may think that it's by chance or even when you see the person that you want to marry and you say, I like this one. Because we are all similar. 
then you say, you suddenly feel, okay, I want this person. Do you see? Look, don't joke. You will, you will account for every opportunity and privilege that God gives you. And all is being done. Sometimes the stage is being set for you. Like this woman. The stage was set for her. Just prepare, 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 prepare. Some of you, I have suffered certain things just because of you. I have received a bullet for you. You never received that particular bullet. You receive your own bullet. But that particular bullet, I have received it for you. Yeah. I have received it for you already. I have covered you with my life. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't experience. So when all has been said and done and happened for you and your brief performance, Benjamin, one day when the Lord calls you and says, Now I need you fully, and you start to discuss with him, Lord, would you like to take uh, ten pounds, Lord? Will you take Take some money and, and stop talking. Will you out I'll have to give an offering? One day I called a brother. I said, Come sit with me. I'm going somewhere. I, I want to drive in the car with you. So I drove with him and I told him, You know, you are a lay pastor. I told him that you are very hardworking. I said, You are one of my best hardworking, sweating lay pastors. But I told him that the reason why you are working so hard is because you are disobedient. And you are trying to compensate for your disobedience and refusal to obey God. That is why you do so much extra effort and hard work. That is why. I just wanted to tell you. By the time we got to where we were going, I said, take a bus and come back home. <laughs> I drove with him to Kumasi. So we got to take a bus and come back. I just wanted to talk to you. When it's time to really give yourself to him, then you start offering him money. So let me give you, I'll give you Wednesday and Thursday evenings. You, you will be okay with Wednesday and Thursday evenings. So, Lord, take, uh, okay, I'll add Saturday to the Sunday. He just look at you and he marvels. After things have been prepared for you, then you say, no. That's why I say it's a day of terror, a day of blasphemy. Hey! Blasphemy. Amen? Amen. So that day, huh? Sure. When he says to you, you know, I need you, don't talk at all. Yes. Yeah. There is no paper, MBA. Look, I don't know where my certificate is. So I'm in political thought. I don't even know where it is. I have, to, I have to find it, but I don't know where it is. I don't look at it. Huh? From here to here, it's lost its value. From here to here, it's lost its value. Is it not a wonderful thing? You go from here to here. Then you say, oh, this certificate, well, uh, it doesn't really fit. You have to start. How much more when you get to heaven? All these things we have, they are nothing. We have nothing. It's nothing. You must lose that value for earthly things and value heavenly things and heavenly blessings and heavenly privileges. I thank God. Maybe God raised me up so that people who are educated in our small world and all that will also lose their value for all those things because they are not as valuable as we think they are at all. It's something that few people have, so you think it's something great, but it's nothing. If you come to the church now, recently we had a camp. There's a doctor, he has a hospital. He gave up, gave, gave up the hospital to be full time. He said, Look, the, the, the fact that uh, I, have, I am able to get rid of this hospital that I have built is the greatest privilege. He said, Even if I die now, the fact that I've been able to get rid and free myself of this thing to be able to work well, uh, it's okay for me. I tell you. Because see, God you get you to a point where you see that, look, this thing, eh? Uh, it's, it's, it's earthly. See, what I'm saying to I can't say to the whole church, but I'm saying it to people who are spiritual. Because I can't go in the whole church and say, this is not of any importance. They say, hey, now we are also doing honest work here. You say that uh, uh, this is not important and uh, you are discouraging honest work and uh, you are telling us that we are working for Pharaoh and others and we are the ones paying tithes and so on. You are coming to, there's a part of what I'm coming to, you see, you see why I can't say it everywhere. I'm coming to show you your career. 
How many want to know your career? I came to discuss your career with you. This is a career discussion. How many want a career discussion? How many want a career discussion? An anointed career. A divine career. God's career for you. Who do men say that you are? They have made you into doctor of waste management, doctor of this, doctor of this, so many things. And God has said that I am calling you to be a, 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 a queen with a crown. I say you are doing women's movement. You can't come. I had a friend who used to be in London, was, was with me in medical school. One day I went to visit him. He came, I said, I called, I said, brother, I'm around. He said, I'll come and pick you. He came to pick me in his nice BMW. Hey, the car was more than a plane. <laughs> so we're driving, then we got to his house. He, when we got to I said, sit down, put on the television, nice sound system, TV and everything. So I said, brother, What's happening? Are you, are you going on? He said, no, I'm going to the States. I said, the States? I said, well, why? He said, oh, because I can't, you know, I've been here for some years. I'm not, you know, so I'm going there to do whatever. So I said, okay. So when we got home, when we were going, I said, he was taking me back in his car. So I said, when you go to the States, well, your TV, this is your night television. And he said, oh, I, I can't take it. I have to leave it. I said, why? Because we use 110 volts in America. We use 220 volts here. So I'll leave. What about the furniture? I said, it's too bulky to carry there. Then that's what we're going there. I said, what about the... <laughs> he said, you see, in America, they drive on the right. And in England, we drive on the left. So that one, too, I have to leave it. So what are you going with? Your bare hands. Then I asked him, I said, what about the cost that you've done? He said, oh, it's not counted over there. Everything is not counted. When you change location, it's not counted. Everything you've acquired, it's all useless. Hey, just going from here to here, Atlantic Ocean. Six hours, then it's, it's not valuable again. I said, wow. I met a guy in America. He was doing a course. I said, Wait, 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 in Ghana, you didn't go to school. So I went to school. I said, Wait, school? Say, United. I said, United. University of Science and Technology. I said, eh, Yeah. I said, What did you study? He said, I studied this, 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 and that. So when you came to America, they said, I thought it was, that didn't have any value at all. So I started university for another five years. When I saw you, have you seen? You say, hey, the person is young, but he looks old. <laughs> Just here and here, no? it's finished. Useless. Brothers and sisters, God will give you something valuable. And then you start discussing with him. Lord, I need to discuss with my wife. And I need, you need to discuss with your wife. I need to discuss with my, my, my parents. I need to discuss. When you are fornicating, did you discuss with your parents? Did you discuss with your parents? Did you ask them anything? Mommy, I'm going to sleep with my boyfriend again. Yesterday I slept with him. It was very painful, but I'm going to try to do it. Mommy, what do you do? Ben, when the Lord needs you, don't, don't ever, I'm telling you, one day he will call you and say, I want you to do this now. Don't start. Don't say, eh, I, I'm doing uh, this, uh, Lord, uh, see you. When the Lord touches you here like this, okay, on your nipple, you'll get something there, you'll be surprised. Oh yeah, you just vanish from this earth. I'm telling you, all of us, you see, you, you are a, a step from disappearing from this earth. One t- touch like this, mm. you see that this place is not good again. Mm. That place that will be touched, you see that it won't work again. Oh yeah. If they, that's why I said that these were men that sat in the first place and looked at the face of the king. All those things are pretty, that you are standing here, you are sitting here. First row. That's Marcella. This is who? Ama. 
This is Fallen. This is Buki. This is Natasha. This is who? Michael. First row. You are hearing it. He said they sat in the first place and they look at his face. Think about it. Do you be asked about it? When they prepared and prepared and prepared and prepared and prepared and prepared and it's okay now. Uh, 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 see you. Uh, uh, okay, look. Uh, tomorrow I have to discuss with my. You are a fool. It's a day of terror and trouble for you. And he said they're blaspheming because of what has been given to you and what the Lord has done for you. Oh, young girls, what the Lord has done for you. You could have been in the hands of a wicked man. Most girls, you see, they sleep with so many different people, but then they sleep with what? a particular person. And that guy, it takes them far. That's when they actually become immersed and baptized in sin. Some of you, you have, no, you have not met that guy. By the grace of God. If you had met him, you wouldn't be standing here today. Yeah. One day I went to visit a certain girl in the university. I said to her, look, you have to give your life to the Lord. You have to this, this, that, and that, and so on. Sin. And she said, oh, I don't believe. I said, fornication. I, I don't see. Fornication is not something wrong. Fornication is something that... Uh, it's an archaic thing you know, from, the, uh, from the Bible. And I don't think it applies. I look at her and marvel. She despised me. As I talked with her, she despised me because her boyfriend was a witch guy. She despised me. The last time I heard of her, she was at a mental hospital. Yeah! The last I heard of her, she was at a mental hospital and she has been discharged. Brothers and sisters, God is going to, God is saving you from mental hospital, from certain boys, certain things. And in addition to that, He said, Okay, come. I like you. I like you. I want to use you. And He wants to, He wants to say, I, Lord, I, um, um, last week I was having a, a meeting, so I've already bought my, t- I was pre- preparing for certain things. So, um, in two weeks' time, I'll come and see you so that. Pastor, can I see you in the office so that we'll discuss it? Can I see you in the office? Can I see you in the office? <laughs> I need to send a few emails to sort things out and then I'll get in touch with you. When you were coming, when you were going for your, for your boyfriend and your girlfriend, were you sending a few emails? Okay, thank you, Benjamin. Is it Benjamin or Bernard? Benjamin, very good. Now, listen to the unfortunate thing that is about to happen. And Memukan answered, he said, Vashti the queen has done wrong to the king, not to, to the king only, but to all the princes and to all the people that are in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus. For this deed shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes, when it shall be reported. And the king Ahasuerus commanded that the king Ahasuerus commanded the queen Vashti to be brought, and she came not. No, no, no. It's a, it's a reported speech. It shall be reported. Likewise, the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes which have heard of the deed of the king. Thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, listen, listen, this is the sad part. I told you, I'm going to tell you two sad stories. Listen. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him. And let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes that it be not altered, that Vasti come no more, come no more before the king. And let the king give her royal estates unto another that is better than she. 
two things. You are going to lose the privilege which you didn't know. And when the king's decree shall make, shall publish throughout the empire, for it is great, all the wives shall give heed to their husband's honor, both to great and small. Are you listening? Are you listening? Sister Buki, are you listening? Listen very well. Because in five years' time, you will, you will you remember this message. And it will come to you in a different way. What do you think? Some of these things, you should keep them. Just keep it. It will mean something different to you later. Even from now. Because at every stage of your life, it means something different. Take her royal estate. Give it to another that is better than she. A better person than you is waiting to take over. And the person is better because she will do the king's commandment. That's why she's better. And her royal estate. Oh, what blessings we have that we don't know we have till they are removed. I said till they are removed. That's why I say I'm more blessed than, blessed than Prince Charles. Because I'm counting things that you are not counting. I'm counting blessings that you don't usually count. I'm counting things. No, I'm not counting money. I'm not counting houses. I'm not counting where I stay. I'm counting so many other things that are privileges to me. That's why I said those that sat first and who saw the king's face is a blessing. May you never have your royal estate. Go stand up. Your royal estate is waiting for you in heaven. When you read this book, that's why I brought it here. When you read this book, you will see that there is a royal estate waiting for you. May your royal estate not say, they will say, take away his royal estate and give it to another that is better than he. Take his crown. Take the estate, the mansions, the palaces, the things. Do you people believe in this message I'm preaching? If you are thinking about this earth, you can't appreciate what I'm saying. Do you understand? I'm not here to help you. The other day I was reading a, a magazine from a church. Millionaire, the things that were, the things that were millionaire's kit. The, the, the one of the set of material, millionaire's kit. Another one, achievers classics. You no, know, achievers classics. Then another one, rich, something riches. And I said, hey, so... It's as if I am not teaching my members I mean prosperity and other things. So what I'm teaching you is a heavenly royal estate. Oh, that morning, John. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. He, millionaire's heavenly millionaire's kit. Royal, royal estate in heaven. I don't have any millionaire's kit here. And achievers classics. No. I'm not saying that it's wrong. It's right for the right context. It's right. But I'm saying that don't be angry with my message because my me- I don't want to explain. If I have to explain, there's something wrong. There's a person here who should not be here. That's why I have to explain. <laughs> yeah, it's you. There's a Judas here. He does not understand. Me. That's why I have to explain. If this man jumps out of London and goes to, where are you going to? St. Lucia. To do what? To be rich, to be poor. Will he ever have even a house? Will he ever have this? Will he ever be that? Will he ever, I mean, will he have money in the future? What will happen to his children, his life? Bishop, you are misleading people. I am not misleading anybody. I am showing people royal estate. You may not know what is royal estate. He said, take away her royal estate and let it be given to another that is better than she. When you read this, Rejoiner says, there's a statement that is always ringing. It's becoming louder in my head. said that both heaven and hell are far wilder than anybody's imagination and expectation. Both heaven and hell. There is no ability to comprehend what it is. Yeah. Both heaven and hell are way beyond our wildest imagination of what it is possible. And that's why for God to be bringing us such revelation. Is it Nanayao's dream? Is it Nanayao? Yeah. His dream that he had. Huh? It's, it's a very important thing. And it's a brief second that you'll be asked to do something. Just do it. Do it. And not that the bishop will come and ask. In your heart, do what the Lord is asking you to do. 
What do you think? Yes. Is it a good idea? Yes. Yeah. So may your royal estate stay with you. Yes. It should not be taken away to be given to another. That's a day of terror. Because you're prepared. And just that moment, you said, certain things have come up. And Bishop, can I call you later? Please, can I get your number? What is your email? So I want to send you an email. But certain things have come up. Which things have come up? No. Let's love him. Let's be grateful for the great estate. Think of it that you are God's greatest precious treasure. Huh? Sometimes when I think of our little bitty degrees and papers which do not help us. Oh, you talk about thought of when I become a child I come, I'll be very rich. There are a lot of ACC, ACCA graduates. When I do fundraise, I say thousand, but I don't see them coming. Uh, let me give two thousand, Pastor. Can I give two? Can I give two thousand pounds, Pastor? I'd like to give five thousand pounds. By the grace of God, you know, God has blessed me. I have not seen that before. I haven't seen one before. I have not seen one before. When I'm taking the office, like I'm extracting blood transfusion, blood transfusion. <laughs> <laughs> with masters and ma- or I should say masters and PhDs <laughs> littered all over which are not helping oh. mercy I'm so blessed to stand in his service you know last time I came I thought I'm going to pray my best prayer for you and I believe that I prayed my best prayer for you. And I believe that. Uh, I believe that. I, mean, I don't know how. But uh, before this camp is over, you will know a little how. God is going to give you glimpses of what to do. Amen. Because you see, you are being brought to the place you have to deliver. You have to deliver. One day I went to a place in Ghana called Achimota, uh, Kiseman, a place where we were doing community health. And then we asked, the, uh, there was a lady there. I don't know what came about. It was part of the questionnaire. And so we asked her whether she had children. She said yes. So we said, Where, which hospital did you deliver at? She said, no hospital. She, said, she pointed to a tree. So I held a tree. I held a tree and I delivered under the tree in the house. That's it. Twins. Yeah. Delivered them in the house. Collected them. It's time for you to hold your tree and deliver. <laughs> <laughs> Hold the tree and push. Let it come out. Yeah. What the Lord has put into you. Hold the spiritual tree and a pillar that stabilizes you and push. It will come out. What do you think? Is it a good idea? Mami Kenwa. It means push hard. Tell somebody. (laughs) Kenwa. I see somebody being led to a river. And the Lord is saying, drink it. It will heal you. Drink it. It will give you life. Drink it. It will bless you. Drink it. Don't stand there and look at it. Drink it. I brought you to the river so that you drink it. And you receive life and blessing. That's why I brought you on this journey. Right up to this river. So that you drink it. Don't come all this way and watch it. Drink it. There's a river flowing by your side. The Lord brought you on a long journey, selected you from among your brothers and sisters and brought you to this place that you would take the water and drink it and that new life would come into your life and you'll be blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I believe. I believe. I believe.